Well, welcome to today's session uh, for Get Travel Talking Week in association with us at TTG Media and Abta Lifeline. I'm April Hutchinson. I'm the luxury editor at TTG, and you are joining us for the Working on Wellness discussion, where our trio of travel leaders will share their insights and successes around staff mental health initiatives and how they've been making well-being in the workplace a priority. Throughout this week and via a series of sessions and activities, we're throwing the spotlight on the issue of mental health and specifically the importance of talking about it within our industry, uh, which we all know has been especially hard hit during the pandemic. Of course, this is also within a wider context in society where the issue is being spoken about a lot more than ever, which is great. Uh, as something, you know, something we all need to understand, share and learn more about. So with me in this session today, I have three brilliant leaders who between them uh, need to show care, leadership and strategy to hundreds and hundreds of travel industry um, professionals up and down the country. Um, oh, excuse me. So I'd like you to please give us all a brief introduction to yourself, uh, the business and a quick overview of who you care for within that business and uh, your team. So I'll start with you firstly, Lisa. Yeah, so hi everybody. Um, so I'm Lisa Fitzell. I'm the Managing Director of Elegant Resorts um, and also If Only. Um, and we've got um, an office in Chester, one in Asgo. Um, overall, between the two companies, there's about 180 staff. So, mm, okay, <laughs> thank you. And over to you, Rad, if you can give us a little introduction. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Rad, Radmila Sofronievich. Nice, easy one for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone calls me Rad. Um, I'm the uh, Chief Operating Officer for Mid Counties Corp Travel. Um, we've got 78 high street shops. We've got over 165 personal travel agents. Um, we've got a large consortium of over 140 members. Um, we've got our own tour operator Corp Holidays. And we also have our support centre. So we have about 80 people that work um, in our uh, support centre for travel in various uh, sort of support functions uh, based in Warsaw. So, uh, yeah, wow. diverse Gosh. travel group. Very diverse. A lot, a lot on your hands. Um, so we'll, we'll dig into all that in, in a bit. And, and lastly, of course, Wilma, uh, if you can give us a brief introduction. Welcome. Yeah. Hi there. And thank you for inviting me to join you today. So I'm Wilma Taylor. I'm the Human Resources Director at Barhead Travel. Um, we've got stores throughout the UK, so England, we've got an expansion project that we had started pre-COVID, um, various stores in Scotland, which is the kind of main area of our business, and a store in Northern Ireland. So we've got, at the moment, about 550 employees um, throughout all these retail networks, and I look after the human resources, health and safety, um, facilities and training at Barhead. Wow, that's, Thank you. uh, your shoulders don't look broad enough for all that, Wilma, well, that's, that's, that's quite a lot. Okay, so thank you all again um, for joining us and let's get started with the um, discussion. I'll start with you, Lisa, first. Um, now, I know you for a few years now and I know you have been implementing um, several initiatives at Elegant um, even before the pandemic. Can you share a little bit more um, about those and then perhaps talk about what you've managed to carry on throughout the crisis and what else you've introduced? Yeah, um, so I, I think um, ment looking after sort of uh, staff's mental health is just, it's always been a really personal um, passion of mine, I guess. Um, and when I came to Elegant Resorts about three years ago, um, we, we put just some, some foundations together. Um, one was uh, Wellness Wednesdays, um, which we would have throughout the year. And there, there were, it was lunchtime sessions, uh, drop in. Um, and you just learned different topics, whether it was about getting better sleep or um, managing stress or, you know, what, how to manage your breath and how that can help you, um, you know, manage stress levels or you know, and so on and so forth. Um, and then we also did yoga um, on a Monday and a Friday um, in the office. Mm -hmm. um, so, so those were the... Um, we actually we became a mindful employer we joined the mindful employer charter um which um is basically a commitment as a company to um you, you know to, to basically put structure around supporting the well-being of mental health within the workplace and um we had two people go on a, a mental health first aider course um, and we did training across the company to all senior and manager levels on basic things of you know um, 
why it's important to support our employees in, in you know, in the workplace, um, how, what signs that they can look for, um, what they can do to help, um, so on and so forth. So, so we did that before the pandemic, um, and then when the pandemic hit, we've actually put quite a lot of things together, really. Um, so, um, you know, we, we ha- I mean, just, you know, communication and being in touch with people is obviously just key for so all of us. Yeah. You know, we're home working almost immediately. Um, but we've, we've ran about 50 quizzes, um, just people just to have a bit of a laugh and just let, let go a bit and see each other. Um, we did those weekly religiously till about October, November, and then I think we all got a bit sick of them. <laughs> so then different formats of them. Um, we've done quite a lot of time to talk sessions. Um, so that was um, just literally having a Zoom for an hour of just talking about anything, you know, about how you're feeling, um, you know, just supporting each other really um, throughout. Um, one of the best things I'd say we've done is we've we've actually invested in a partnership with a company called LifeWorks, um, and they have an app with lots of content about lots of um, different things, whether you, you're suffering with stress or sleep or anxiety. Um, there's there's um, lots of links to exercise um, uh, courses, virtual exercise um, online. There's meditation. There's uh, yoga. Um, and uh, but the most important part of that is that there's a counselling service so that there has been a number of staff who have really, really, really struggled and almost, you know, reach breakdown point. Mm-hmm. And, and that's really helped them massively. You know, it's, it's professional help, which is where it, where it got to, really. Um, and then we've we've got um, weekly hit session on a Wednesday at lunch and yoga on Friday or virtual um and then you know we've we launched a newsletter called elegant um at home um if only you've got one as well um different content because we're different companies but you know in everything we do we embed wellness actually so that's i think that's the biggest learning is in all of our communication um company communication we've always had a wellness section um so in the er at home um, you know, the first few months was all about um, inspiration um, to our clients. So from the suppliers we work with, they were doing things like live meditation sessions in Sri Lanka and, you know, lunchtime yoga in Dubai. And so we weaved in all of that content, really. So we just kept it flowing through. Um, mm. And uh, we've also produced in the last um, three months, we've now got a wellness of work publication, which has got content that we're bringing in from the LifeWorks app. Um, so just short snippets of, of things that, um, in you know, positive quotes, but snippets of things to, to help um, manage your well-being really. Um, and you know, talking about you know and sharing stories within the company as, as well. Um, and then we've also, um, gosh, I think this is January. <laughs> Um, we have now put wellness ambassadors in place. Um, so we've oh, got- right. Yeah. So what are they? What's their? How does that work? Yeah, I think all of the content of was driven really from the senior management team. And what we want to do is really, you know, allow our people to have a voice and, um, and, and you know, to contribute to, to all of these things. We could I don't want to keep shoving yoga down everybody's neck. <laughs> it's not the same for everybody. Not for everybody it's, not yeah. it, but it's not for everybody. So. Um, so it's really about having people represent um, everybody throughout the company. So there's there's eight. We're doing it as a joint initiative with If Only. Um, and um, yeah, they, they are in place. They've had a half day um, mental health awareness course. Um, and three of them are going on to be mental health first aiders. Um, and they will basically run the newsletter and the activities that we do. So We've done things in the past like walking challenges and um, cycling challenges. So we're also encouraging exercise and well-being. It's not all about mental health. Um, it's really about wellness. It's about the whole the whole 360, um, your mind and your body. Um, yeah, so there's lots of things. Well, <laughs> and trying to run a business in this in this uh, particular time yeah, as well. I, I, uh, we've covered it at all bases and and we we did a survey only last week well last two weeks two weeks ago about returning to the office we wanted to get it right and create 
because we knew that people would be super anxious about it. And we've, you know, we've all got new lives now working at home and we get used to a, a, a different life of being back to normal again. So, so we got lots of feedback um, about how we open the office, but also about our communications and are we doing enough, too much, too little. Um, but the general feedback is that people feel really, really well supported and have done throughout the pandemic. So I think that's a good thing. So it's been so difficult for everybody. So if we've yeah. been able to help as a company support people, I think that's a great thing. So, yeah. yeah. No, that's yeah. brilliant. There's obviously such a lot going on there. And as you say, everybody is completely different. You know, I'm not a yoga person. No, but no. Like, I just like to put some music on and have a little dance around and just sort of shake things off, you that's know, or, or have a laugh or a giggle with somebody. You know, yeah. everybody has their own way of dealing with things, don't they? So as long as you just give people the sort Absolutely. of tools. To... Yeah. And that's the thing. It's adapting. It's Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> lovely. OK, we'll go into some of those things in a bit more detail anyway about, um, you know, the, the different um, elements of wellness, as you said, the 360 approach to to things. Yeah. Um, but Rad, over to you now. Um, I know recently you partnered with uh, with the mental health charity Mind yeah. to um, get some sessions um, for your guys. Uh, yeah. What what do the sessions involve? Um, how did you get involved with Mind itself? Because I imagine even accessing mental health resources such as that can be very difficult at the moment because they're all they must be very stretched with all these demands on them. So tell us about how it all came about and what it involved. Well, our, our relationship with Mind goes back a, a number of years. So I think we're fortunate in that, you know, we already had a good relationship with them because mental health to us has been really important for some time now, not obviously, and it's heightened because of the situation, um, but, you know, it's, it's important anyway. So we'd already um, had a long-term relationship with them. They attended some of our managers' conferences in the past. So even society managers' conference. So once a year, we would get all the managers, whether you work in food or childcare or travel or whatever, everyone together. And um, and the last one that we did all together um, was uh, was a, a well-being one, and Mind were there as well. So there was a whole sort of um, basic first aid training for all of our managers, which was really good. And um, and um, yeah, you know, we, we've done leadership as well, um, mental health training, so that we're all. Um, I guess trained to a slightly higher level and um, so that we're all sort of deemed to be the first aiders um, within the society as well so for anybody in any of the areas so there's, there's a, there was already a long-standing relationship which we were uh, fortunate to have in place but then we decided in about uh, February time that we needed to do something specific for travel so we'd done a, um, a survey um, travel actually um, came out lower than the rest of our colleagues and when you bear in mind in food they were putting themselves at risk at the front line, you know, in childcare the same, but travel actually scored lower in terms of how they, how well they thought they were doing with their um, mental health um, at the moment. And um, so, you know, we, we did some uh, wellbeing sessions um, and they went down really, really well. So we had uh, mind there um, and, you know, it was really guidance on diet, exercise and um, structure in a day. And, and, and we had people on those calls, it was all voluntary, have to come on um, but we had people who were on furlough who were, were at home or were actually working and, and I think sometimes as well there's a um, perception for colleagues who are working that the people who are at home on furlough are having it a little bit easier or whatever or the other way around as well you know so I think it was really good from an appreciation people discussing their individual um, challenges so there was a lot of talk about sleep <laughs> too much sleep not enough sleep <laughs> anxiety whether they were working whether they were not working and um, so it was a really good um, opportunity for people to share how they were feeling uh, wherever they were at the time um, and, and they went down really well and um, we also went through uh, grocery aid with them that's our um, charity that we um, have within the society supports all of our colleagues whether whichever area they work in um, and also their dependents as well so their children mm -hmm or uh, their, you know, their, their uh, closest family um, if they're having challenges because it's not just us that are affected or the colleague, it could be their personal circumstances at home or their children that they're looking after who are also having mental health challenges and that in turn could be impacting them. So, um, so we went through that in a lot more detail in terms of what support was available to our colleagues. Um, and you know, there, there's a lot of um, um, 
information they can access. They can access counselling. So they get six free sessions of counselling. Um, they get lots of, uh, there are lots of apps and different types of apps. So there's apps that are just for young people. There are apps for, um, depending on what type of app you would be particularly interested in. Um, and, um, and there was grants as well. So they could apply for a grant if it was a financial uh, challenge mm -hmm. they were having or debt management um, support even relationship support because obviously yeah. you know people spending time at home it's either gone one way or the other <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're, either, they're either getting on it far far better or actually they're getting on each other's nerves so um so yeah there's been a lot of <laughs> there's been a lot of uh, and, and and i think exactly what lisa was saying it's very individual isn't it so mm. you know what somebody's experienced somebody could be experiencing completely experiencing completely the opposite like for example the sleep you know so we have people who can't sleep so we had a colleague who said they hadn't slept for three days mm -hmm. and then we're having people who were sleeping too much they, they wanted to advice on I, I just can't you know I, I just can't get motivated mm -hmm. for the day or I just can't get with it you know so it's just really um, individual and um, and there's no right or wrong answer in any of this it's really about finding uh, what you know how how we can support people on, a, on an individual basis and, and how you in, how you work your way through this and so it's yeah it's so true that um you know mental health issues don't discriminate they affect everybody at any point at any time and you just don't know when it's going to hit you so and sometimes the hardest thing is just putting your feet on the floor getting out of bed getting on with the day and once you do that you know but if you can't get to that into that stage then obviously yeah it's, it's great that you've got so much in place and um, for people across the board there's such a lot um going on um and uh, over to you uh Wilma um now HR is your business you're you're all about people helping people um but this must have been a particularly challenging time um for you with all your resources called upon um during this time um how's it been for you tell us a little bit about the kind of things that Barhead perhaps either already had in place or has accelerated or has felt you know the need to do um a lot more and what's been really helpful to people yeah so I think like you know you said Rad we've really found this challenging. I think the industry as a whole has found it really challenging. And the HR remit, you know, I believe has moved from a more operational element to a people in, in wellness focused area. Mm -hmm. um, so pre-pandemic, we were doing the same. We had the mental health first aiders, um, some mental health champions. So that has obviously continued throughout the, the pandemic. Pandemic. we've actually increased the number that we have and, and given the reach that we have in, in all the stores right throughout the UK, we put together a, a mental health and well-being hub. So we have an actual internet site that has um, all of the sites available, all of the links available, you know, if it's to do with, you know, the home, um, so they can look at the financial things and wellness elements. Um, it includes links from the, the NHS, um, drugs, alcohol. So there's a, a huge, you know, I could go on and on and on about what's on that. And again, you know, we've, we've covered most of it. Um, work-life balance has been a, a huge thing as well. Striking that work-life balance has been really challenging for some people, you know, if they're caring for dependents like myself you know I'm in this routine in the morning I've got an 85 year old father I get up in the morning get showered get ready for work go with the paper so routine we touched on that routine is is really important to get into that routine and encourage others you know that are struggling to get out of bed to try and find a routine mm -hmm. um, we've done some events as well with them um, we had Bill Martha so we had him speaking and doing some motivational sessions. Again, back to yoga. We had a, a yoga session as well. Um, we have our weekly and monthly employee well-beings um, communication. So newsletters that, you know, when things were starting to open up, we had things like pre-mark, clear out your wardrobe and then fill it up again. <laughs> Go to IKEA, you know, do some DIY um we did quite a bit of training we had uh, when the store started to open we had a, a five day um pre-opening operational session where we had a protocol document we worked with our us colleagues um who were obviously having a rough time too so we collaborated and we put together this document 
um, a very strict document I may add that went through everything, including all the health and safety, PPE, um, things, what, what they were, you know, if they had worries about traveling on public transport, where to reach out to, what to do. Um, amending policies and procedures. If anything, you know, we, what we're saying is if you're not comfortable, then, you know, speak to us. We don't, we don't want you, we don't want to raise that anxiety that's all, already there. And as that anxiety is raised, we all know that that leads to other things. So we were doing a lot around that. Um, mm. So yeah, lo lots of things going on. You know, we're recognising that work-life balance is really key. It's, it's really important that people strike that up and, you know, life matters. Now, mm. I think, if anything, we've all learned from that. It's important um, yeah, to get that balance. Yeah, right. absolutely. I, I'm not sure I've managed it myself yet, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I've certainly, and I want travel to get back, but I've certainly enjoyed the sort of the change of pace, if you like, of just being able yeah. to focus on me a bit more or, or, or rather yeah. than always yeah. thinking about the next trip or the next thing that, you know, the next big thing yeah. that needed doing. Um, and certainly, you know, it sounds like you've all three companies have just put so much in place, which is fantastic. And um, there's just you've thought of everything that someone could be going through, which is which is brilliant. But I wondered what you think is the single most important thing uh, you've either done for colleagues or advocated as a business during the, the pandemic. Um, maybe yours would be uh, work-life balance, Wilma, or I'd, I'm not sure. What, let's start with you, Wilma. What do you think is the single most important thing that um, Barhead's done for people? Um, I think communication. I think that's been really key, particularly given, you know, that we had quite a mix of things going on. So we had people that were active in the business, obviously that were um, processing refunds, dealing with customer issues. Some of them, you know, quite irate, understandably. We had an NHS project that was going on where we were doing some call handling for NHS. And then we also had our furloughed employees, the normal employees who are on maternity leave or were off for personal reasons. Um, so yeah, communication was was really key, and we had to get these communications pulled together, where we could you know circulate them out to all these different um, sectors, and yeah. make sure that everyone was getting all the key messages. Um, yeah. We had yeah. all employee town halls, where we opened these up to a live question and answer session at the end of it to make sure that we were giving a business update, but also asking them. You know, this is what we're doing, but what do you actually need from us? So we're taking feedback as well um, from people. The NHS, again, you know, that was difficult. Some of them were dealing with um, COVID issues. Mm -hmm. So we had to put training in place, which was different from the exciting travel Talking element that holidays, we normally yeah. um, focus on. So, yes, there was, you know, we were just being everything to everyone, basically. And I think adaptability as well as communication you were just adapting and you know at a pace yeah you have everything to sort of was, everything was done at pace yeah so you have I think to we sort just of... became a HR became a one-shop stop for the whole workforce yeah and yes it's it been a huge learning curve. yeah yeah and uh, Lisa what about you what do you think is the single most important thing that you've um that you've done as yeah well? I, I mean I agree totally with Wilma that you know, communication in a crisis is key, isn't it? And it, we were certainly in a crisis for, you know, a long time. Um, but I think the time to talk sessions were really came, we, we started doing those at a, a time when people were starting to break a bit, you know, and um, in various times, hasn't there, where, you know, we had the first three months, which was, you know, hell on earth of dealing with refunds and, you know, irate clients and, you know, and just our business had to go into a different business. Um, so, you know, and we, we had a, you know, a, we identified early on who could go on furlough because of their personal circumstances, because they weren't going to be able to handle it with their kids or, you know, in childcare. And, and we did actually talk to people quite openly about who goes on furlough and who, who doesn't. Um, but we didn't, we, we thought we'd have flexibility with it and we didn't at that stage. So the people that were that got the brunt of it, they were falling over by September, you know, and then we had the flexible furlough where we could use that to store mm -hmm. yeah. stuff. Um, but the time to talk sessions were really good. Um, and the partnership with what LifeWorks, I know that 
the counselling service has been used by a number of people that were really, really struggling and it's really so yeah brilliant okay and your time to talk how do you structure those is it you pair people up or is it a do you sort of make appointments with people or how do you structure it if somebody was thinking of doing that kind of thing themselves it's just that we had a bit of training with all the managers just you know sort of questions to ask and you know and, and, and how to sort of you know structure it really um and then the managers just hold it with their teams so um and it is literally to talk about how we're doing, you know, because because we're all moving at pace. We're all, you know, we've not stopped, have we, throughout this? So, um, so that you know was we're meeting, 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 and that session is literally how are you feeling, how how are you getting on, how's how's homeschooling going? You is know, that a natter? Thing. Good, good natter. Yeah, yeah, generally, yeah, yeah. exactly. So, um, so that's been really good. Yeah, because it's <laughs> important to have both, isn't it? Really, to be able to talk to your colleagues about work stuff to be able to talk to your colleagues freely because they are you know to a large degree friends and then you also need a good support network outside so you can let off steam about whatever's happening at work you also you know you need someone who understands travel and the kind of stuff that you're going through and then yeah perhaps you do need those external external sources that are the true professionals in these kind of things so it sounds like you've managed to put all those different elements into place um, for people and rad what would you, you say is the, oh, sorry yeah go on <laughs> sorry no i was going to say if you think about it when we're in the office you've got the water cooler moments or the yeah. you know making tea what you know those those go don't they when you're all working at home so it was important to create opportunities to do that really so yeah i have very long conversations with myself at home that i used to just waffle <laughs> on to people about in the office <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um so yeah rad what do you think has been the most uh single most important thing that you've done as a business i mean i would completely agree it's about communication so but very much listening to the needs of what the colleagues are saying and at the right time so i think you know it, 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 exactly what we were saying we've gone through lots of stages for us it felt like probably once we, when we got through to December, January, and then we're going back into another lockdown, what should be our peak trading period, that should be our busiest time. And then we've got people who are working again through in our virtual call center while the branches were closed. And that whole work-life balance, I think, is, is often harder on when, if you're working from home. And that's what we were finding. We were getting, you know, uh, again, a lower score on work-life balance for those people that were working in our virtual call center, because it's that finding that cutoff time and the difference between, you know, obviously um, separating the work and, and, the, and the home life um, for some of them was, was quite hard. You know, so I think listening to what um, they, the needs were, we did that through various surveys. We've, we survey our, our colleagues on uh, numerous times. And we've just done a recent one um, just in the last week or so where colleagues have gone back to branch. So how are they feeling now? Um, because they're, and they're feeling very overwhelmed because if you think everything's changed, you know, particularly if they've been on furlough for a number of months, you know, our, the suppliers have changed. You know, there's, there's some operators that now don't deal through the trade, for example, like Bourne or whatever. You know, so there's, there's changes in terms of um, policies, procedures, suppliers, everything. And, and uh, we're working on um, still furloughing some colleagues and so they're not all come back full time. So, you know, it's that balance of, of getting on with it with the lack of knowledge um, and, and recent um, information that they've all got to get up to speed with. So there's a, even today, there's a feeling of, overwhelmment and that that didn't exist over a month ago so it's all the time I guess listening to what's happening uh, listening to how they're feeling and then acting upon uh, that as you go along so I think that the communication has been you know it has been really important through all of that um, yeah. and, and us talking about it you know I think just you know keeping uh, and and uh, and um asking those questions but asking it again you know so how are you today everyone's going to say they're fine that standard replies in it but then asking it again and how are you really mm -hmm. you know how has it really been and whatever and then you find that people do open up we talk about our own personal experiences we're all human we've all had our own challenges over the last 12 months just to normalize it as well and it you know it all um you know obviously um adds to that so yeah i think the communication parts have been the most important yeah, it's very true, isn't it? As, as, a, as a species, we're very like to say, oh, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. But actually, if you dig deeper, people 
people aren't and um and yeah as you said it's all about openness and that's the whole point of the week that we're doing the, the great work that everyone's been doing is just to get people talking about it and to release that stigma um around it which has been you know which has been one of the positive things we hope of, of all this mess um now there's something of a debate i think between championing positive mental health of, of being like yeah you know you can do this you, you'd be great you can get through it but also we need to kind of face the reality to a degree and not all not pretend that it's all roses and I think a lot of companies have been increasing that transparency in a way of, of saying to the teams look guys I want to be honest with you this is how we're doing I can't sugarcoat yeah. things um but then you obviously have to deal with that reaction from from people as well so Lisa how do you feel about the level of transparency and sugarcoating versus you know pretending sort of everything is um you know, I think it's a it's always about being open and honest with your communication. And um, I we have our business updates of town halls as well. And all the way through, I've been really open with where we are financially, um, which is a bit of a risk because at the end of the day, people could panic about that. But at the same time, if you explain what you're doing and how and what our you know plan is um, and how our owners are they feel a lot more secure about that. Um, so that's something that we've, you know, we have done and said, this is how much we're losing, you know, um, but you know, and our owners have been incredibly supportive. So we, we have been really open and honest um, about that. Um, and then, you, you know, in terms of, um, you know, the, the mental health thing, I mean, you know, for me, it's, it's not really just all about mental health, it's just wellness. It's just encouraging people to keep themselves healthy um and look after themselves you know we, we've all we've all had so much to handle um so you know just just sort of giving tips on, on how we can do that and making sure that all our managers are having their one-on-ones and just checking in on people and we're, as a senior management team we're aware of you know where where we've got concerns and and we can do something about it so we're small enough to do that it's a lot harder in a bigger company but you know, we're, we're quite small, really, compared to, you know, um, Barhead and mid counties. So, um, so yeah, so that's, that's, that's been our, our tactic on it, really. So, yeah, okay, how do you how do you feel about that in the sense of, um, of Rad and Wilma, you know, that you are um, really huge organisations, you know, you, you said earlier about the, the number of people. Um, is it about trying to make sure you do have people in place who are looking at certain things and keeping an eye on certain things rather than, you know, you have the hub and you have information there, but I suppose it's quite easy to, to get a bit lost if you're within a large organisation. How do you handle those kind of things? Uh, well, from our point of view, we've got um, obviously our different uh, divisions that we have, and they're all headed up by um, it, by people specifically for those areas. So our personal travel agents, for example, they have their own network. They, you know, they're self-employed, but they all um, have they have a virtual office. They talk to each other. They 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 had lots of initiatives themselves that were very specific to them, and um, because of the type of businesses that they are, and um, so you know we try to make sure that in whatever area they are, it was the um, right approach for, for each of the areas. And the uh, same with our consortium members, they run their own businesses, their own, their own business owners. So they're, they're managing it themselves. But obviously anything that we can do from a, uh, from a support that we can do, give at the center, we would have those conversations. Um, and then within our own you know, uh, network, our own retail uh, branches, um, the regional managers were still working, um, head of retail as well. and 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 in our support centre as well, you know, all of them, we didn't furlough um, any of those colleagues, um, you know, throughout that period, there was a couple of them um, that, that were, were done at their own request, or, or if it suited, or if we, you know, if the need was at that particular time. So I think it was very, it's very bespoke, so although it feels like it's a very large organisation and, and whatever, but it's about making sure that it's appropriate in each area and we've got the dedicated um, uh, resource you know to manage through those times and we were very open and honest as well we did business updates we've had um, you know consortium uh, member meetings uh, where uh, they could come on uh, they've had their own um, lots of sessions themselves where they could share their learns um, or challenges or whatever it may be the same with the personal travel agents 
um, and, and you know, with our own waterfront colleagues, the Warsaw um, Support Centre and, and with our own retail shops, we've held business updates, we've told them exactly the position they, they've all understood uh, where, where we are um, and, and also how they, you know, how they support that uh, through this time. So yeah, I yeah. agree. Yeah, we all, all need to be honest. There's no point in sugarcoating yeah. it. It's not, yeah. you know, <laughs> you know, it is what it is, isn't it? We're all in the same uh, position, and it's how we get through it in the best possible way. Yeah, and Wilma, what are your thoughts on um, you know uh, the people working within a large organisation, how they can feel uh, supported and, and have access to things, and it's, it's about having everything at the hub and allowing that to filter to filter round to people. Yeah, pretty much so. I mean, the hub sort of has it all, but it doesn't obviously have that personal one-to-one -one touch. So we are encouraging managers to make sure they do their, their check-ins and their one-to-ones. Their HR are also all over it. You know, they're all over the people that are in remote roles. So the likes of um, our web developer, so he's in his own role, the person that actually looks after the intranet, he's in a role person that actually does the yielding and buys the properties she's on her own so we make sure that we have these coffee mornings or virtual coffee mornings as we call them so where the people that are in these isolated roles we make sure that on a friday they join this coffee morning session so there's maybe three or four of them on that that call Social media itself, you know, WhatsApp, as um, Rad was saying, you know, the, the sales agents in particular, they all keep in touch with each other. They're all sharing things, um, the communications that we send out. So they talk about their cosy nights in and they all share <laughs> um, the box sets to watch and, you know, they share things that they're doing, things that are getting them through it. So it really is a, a, a community hub and a, a coming together of, all things that say anything to anybody it is individual at the end of the day so again yeah. communication taking feedback doing our surveys making sure we act on it and just be there for everyone yeah i remember i spoke to um uh, your colleagues in the belfast branch when we were doing top 50 and they were managing as you said the both things they had the h you know the head office stuff which they were following and they were keeping in touch as much as they could with their little group their unit and they said one of the benefits that they never would have experienced was they got the chance to meet loads of other people from barhead you know up and down the country but it's virtually but you know so they were tapping into everything they could really to you know to meet everybody and keep in touch which was nice to hear um so as a bare minimum um just supposing i appear out of, under a rock and i don't know what to do when it comes to this um what what do you think a company should or co could be implementing uh when it comes to mental health support and getting a framework in place in terms of the basics let's start with you Wilma first in terms of your HR head so as a bare minimum again you know I think it's just be there for everyone you know just make sure that those communication links are, are available and act on feedback you know the feedback that we get is absolutely key it's how people are feeling so it's important to them it should be important to us mm -hmm. okay Lisa what would you say were the bare minimum things you need to do as a company yeah, I think it's it just sort of, you know, you need to lead from the top and um, and it become part of your culture so that it's it's OK. You know, it's OK to talk. It's it's OK. You know, if you need if you need to have any support for any mental health problems that, you know, you're experiencing. So same, same as, as as Wilma in that way, I think to to do some training um, with them, with man, it depends on how big the company is, but just some basic training um, so that people sort of understand what to look out for and um because you're almost you, you're also saying as a company it's, it's actually okay if you if you if you are experiencing any mental health issues because I think the stats are something like one in five experience it every year or something you know so it's okay um where it's there's been such a stigma for so long and because you can't physically see it that it is it's like any illness you know so um I think I think that's really important um and then and but as i said it's not just about mental health it's about the whole wellness thing so just you know if you run some challenges you know to do some walks or cycles to you know encourage fitness um and actually do something good in terms of giving back um it's all part of a good yeah. so um, yeah, yeah. All, all good tips i think and yeah. um and rad would you um 
uh, obviously not everybody, not every company would be able to put such a structured kind of employee assistance program in place, if you like, that covers counselling, support, legal, finance, all the things that you sort of have in place. But what would you say are some of the, the just the core things that any company should make sure they've got in place? For me, I think first and foremost, you need to understand how your colleagues are feeling. You know, so however you do that, whether you survey, you can use cheap online tools that are well free online tools or just talk to them so I think it first of all is understanding what's the position today how are they feeling today and then understanding as well um, the signposting so it isn't our jobs to to solve um, all the problems or, or to you know to to be an expert in it but I do feel that we have a responsibility to signpost appropriately so I think you know giving them the, um, you know, so knowing in your local area, what are the, what are the uh, support uh, functions available to your, to your teams or, um, you know, just, just some helplines, you know, so, so that you've got a, a signposting opportunity and, and, and having those available and talking about it, normalizing it, you know, making sure that it's, it's part of everyday life because it is life. And, um, you know, we, for example, have got uh, doing a mental health awareness week next week. Um, in society so there'll be lots of top tips videos and we're doing a call to action about um, everybody getting active so um so that's one of the five ways of uh, of well-being so yeah so we you know we there's there's lots of things going on all the time and i think it's just making sure that um it isn't uh, it, you know it isn't this isn't uh, just a one off this isn't just because of covid or whatever it's it, it's it's life and and you know it needs to become part of everything that you do so just talk about it yeah that's really good advice actually because you know you're so right this isn't just for a pandemic this is no. long term changes that we can all make in ourselves that can help yeah. us deal with things um, better so let's talk a little bit about the um you know the fitness the diet the you know sleeping um i'm sure you've found loads of tools that you've shared uh, with your teams um you know over this time but um lisa i think you're probably well, i don't know actually you might be as, as well placed as lisa, but i know lisa does have a very um keen interest in this area so how important are all those things generally to our to our well-being yeah, I, I think any doctor would probably say sleep is your number one thing um, to, to fix if you're, if you're having wobbles in life. Um, so, you know, I think, um, and routine um, is really important. So I think Wilma spoke about that. So, you know, and, and you know, us as, as leaders, we've had to deal with a lot. So in, but if we're not healthy and well and together, we can't do our job. So you, you happen to be guilty about looking after yourself which I think as women, we often are, you know, we feel we're the last to, you know, we need to help everyone else. We don't really put ourselves first. So, um, so for me, you know, routine was really key getting outdoors every day, come what may <laughs> <laughs> fresh air and a walk. That was absolutely instrumental. Um, and I just, I've got really into podcasts in, in the last, um, I think lots of people have in the last eight, you know, since the pandemic. Yeah, really. take your brain somewhere else completely. That's it. Right? Yeah. So I just, you know, so we in our um, weekly communication, we weave in podcasts and, you know, you know, we share the Netflix and, you know, what, what you know, the social things as well. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I think that's that's really good. So yeah. and then, sleep, sleep, sleep is really important. So what's your top tips for sleep then, Lisa? Share. Well, I because I've had trouble with sleep most of my life, really. So the, the reason I talk like this is because I, it's my own self-development stuff. That I've worked on. Thank you, thank you, Lisa. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, so I find that, you know, not being on your device or your computer an hour before bed is absolutely crucial. Um, I find that if I work in the evening, that does often affect my sleep. If I work late, you know, at eight o'clock. Um, and, it, and there's no barriers at home, is there? So, you know, there, there often isn't in my life anyway when it comes to work. But, you know, you need to put some barriers down so that you can calm your brain down. Um, mm. I love a hot bath. Um, so if I'm feeling quite stressed, that's my thing. I'll put a hot bath on and my candle. Um, might listen to a nice calming podcast or some calming music <laughs> oh I, I agree I was recently all of these things we're, we're quite sensitive human beings yeah 
sort of nurture ourselves to calm ourselves down and then you'll sleep well because then the times you don't sleep well is because you've gone to bed with some thought in your head that's bothering you and that's when you wake up at two o'clock in the morning and I did ruminate over it so it's too much um, to process isn't it for your brain to yeah yeah so yeah yeah I recently <laughs> discovered um, I have an Amazon dot thing or whatever it is. And at first I was yes. just, like, very strange to have a little lady in the corner of the room that I would sort of shout things at. Um, yeah. But I did say to her one night, Alexa, play ocean sounds. And I was out like a light. She yeah. Was, you know, yeah. The sound of the ocean was just, you know, piping yeah. through. So, you know, whatever you can find to help you um, relax is going to be key, isn't it? Um, Brad, how important for you has it been to get across these you know, the, the, the combination of everything to, to your yeah. guys, you know, diet, sleep, exercise, um, and how, how, how it can make a difference to you. Yeah, absolutely. So it, it's it definitely the exercise, I think. I mean, for me personally, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not great at that, you know, but I do try and get out uh, and walk and, and certainly walked, you know, a lot more than I have mm. normally and discovered areas actually of, of where I live that I'd never even knew existed, even though I've lived here for quite a while. So that's been really interesting. And I think that's the same for everybody. Um, I think drinking water, you know, that's such a massive um, uh, benefit as well, or just, you know, just being hydrated. And, and, you know, we get that a lot as well. I think when people are really concentrating on a screen all day and and maybe sometimes don't drink water, you know, or, or are not hydrated. We can see, you know, when people are feeling a bit challenged with that. So I think it's just making sure that all of the the different um, elements and and you know, like you say, diet. It, 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 again, it's both ways. You know, we've got some people who have because they're working from home have really, you know, it's they've seen the benefit of that yeah. and they've really yeah. stuck to and it's been great. And then other people who have just flat, flat, flat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's that's you know that's the way that they've been able to deal with it, isn't it? So. I think, um, yeah, it's just making sure that people understand, you know, uh, uh, what what uh, sort of things are obviously going to benefit your well-being and, um, and you know, uh, making those things available to them. But, yeah. Yeah. And Wilma, have you um, tried to instigate more of that? And have you come to an own, your own understanding of how important all these things are? <laughs> yeah, you know, I think, I think they're all important, you know. I, I think it, it's really important, particularly sleep, you know, I think we all know if if you don't get a proper night's sleep, then it is hard to to function. To go back to what Rad said, you know, hydration, that's really important. You know, we we make sure that we communicate out to people that they really need to take their breaks. And as I say, we have these coffee break sessions. You know, it's important they do that. Mm -hmm. Um, Healthy eating. We've got a a Slimming World manager, actually, (laughs) in in the business who's always promoting some of... um, you know, the healthy eating stuff. And again, you know, exercise, I think you do need to exercise, you know, to get a rest. I think you need to burn up off some of that energy. So I think that's important. Um, routine, you know, we've covered it off already. You know, routine's important. Even keeping a diary, you know, writing things down, what's working for you, what's not working for you. Um, and have your chill time as well. You know, it is, it's really difficult. The pandemic has hit us all, I think, with so many challenges. Mm. I think it's really important that you have those downtimes and take your colleagues up on the, you know, the cosy nights in and the box sets and get talking. What, you know, what? It's, it's things to share, it's conversation, you know, just get to it and, yeah. and do it. And we will all get through this, be positive. You know, there is, the end is in sight. It is. We we know it is. We we do know it is. It's at some point. This cannot go on forever. <laughs> yeah. um, so, what are the cozy nights in? What's what's that? What's that about? I think this is where they all share. So, um, I'm not a great TV addict. Oh. I must admit. Probably a good but thing. I know Wilma. Bridgeton was one of them. Line right. of Duty was another one. Yeah. I think they share Netflix. Oh, okay. Um, what what's hot on Netflix? Then they're all watching it. And what do you think will happen? And this is what I think. And what do you think of this? And you know yeah. they share all of the things. I think the the Bridgeton in particular, you know, was about the the royal family, but of a, a different nature. But as I say, I haven't seen any of these things, but I know all the chat. <laughs> so you could, yeah, you could still join the pub quiz, couldn't you? If they yeah. ask some of the uh-huh. questions. 
Yeah, but um, again, it's all about communication, isn't it? Just making sure that everybody's got someone to talk to or something to talk about or is, you know, is just not in their own head for, for, for too long a time, I, I guess. Um, now, we do know that the pandemic has obviously had an earth shattering effect on our particular um, industry. What do you think have been some of the most difficult things um, to cope with? Gosh, must be so many. Um, but how, as a business, have you tried to help people deal with these things? Uh, Lisa, start with you. Yeah, um, I mean, I think, you know, initially it's the fear of losing your job, you know, because we've most companies have had to unfortunately make some redundancies. So without a doubt that, you know, that's just the hardest thing to deal with, you know, as a leader and, and obviously as knowing that you're you're putting on so much, you know, um, stress and and anxiety to all your employees as well um so I think that's really really difficult and I think you've just got to really communicate 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 through the process um and and be open and honest and caring and show show compassion um and understanding um throughout it so um and then I'd probably say the homeschooling because <laughs> the majority of our employees are working mums um I was chatting to one of them yesterday when I came into the office and she was just beaming from eye to eye she said I'm so happy to be in here you I'm so happy that my son's back at school I literally had to sit with him and go through everything because there was my kids had zoom lessons so and they're teenagers so it was a bit easier um and they don't want me helping because I'm just I'm just not useless <laughs> so according to them so but um but when you've got younger kids and some schools were were sending out you know things to do over email and and the teachers weren't actually online helping them I had no clue that that was actually I'd never heard that before because a lot of my friends had still had online classes um but you know she'd have to sit and do all the lessons with him and then she's got the added pressure of work and in and out and so there was just no let up, whether it was homeschooling or working. Um, you know, I think that's really, really difficult. So, yeah. So yeah. That, those are the two things that stand out for me. Yeah. And Wilma, would you find a similar kind of scenario or what do you think it's been the really the yeah. hard thing? I, th I think very similar. Yeah. You know, we've had issues with homeschooling. We've had people looking, you know, after elderly parents having to make a adjustment bereavement's been another one you know where people have really really struggled not being able to see loved ones um not being able to be with them the length of time it was taken to arrange funerals and you know whether funerals were local with the travel restrictions you know there was an impact there as well um i think anxiety and and depressions on the rise so a lot of phone calls into HR about that you know what do we do where do we go how can you help us again you know it, I think it's just emotions of all of all kinds nothing nothing really would um challenge me I think we've, we've heard it all we've dealt with it all there's just so many things around life in general at the moment our yeah. whole life cycle has changed. Yeah, yeah, so true. And um, Rab, would it be a similar sort of situation yeah. for you? Or what, do you what have you found the hardest to deal with and how have you tried to help uh, get, get through those I, things? I think all of those things that both Lisa and, and Wilma say, and, and also managing change because it's been so constant. Well, that's the only thing that's been constant. <laughs> <in the> <laughs> okay. You know, what, especially with uh, restrictions and changes in terms of, you know, particularly last summer, one minute their, their destination is on and then off and uh, shops are open and then they're closed. And then are they going to open again? And how many are going to open? So I think it's just that whole uncertainty of, of what's happening and what's going to happen and then people being able to. And it's that lack of control. And that's that's what instigates mm. a lot of it the anxiety isn't it because we're not in control we're not in control of what's happening today what's going to happen tomorrow and that's really heightened I think um you know all, all the challenges that we've seen so um yeah and, and and again in terms of supporting them through that it's just all the things that we've talked about already you know that openness the honesty talking to them through that explaining all of our decisions and why you know, so if we're only opening certain amount of shops at a particular time, why are we doing that? Why are we only using so much furlough, et cetera? So that people understand 
the reasons behind decisions, that it's not just a decision that we've made that, you know, um, likely or that, you know, that what we've done, for example, the same with the with the uh, redundancies, you know, at the same time as making some of our uh, some of our um, colleagues redundant, particularly the travel money <laughs> colleagues last year, we also then acquired two businesses at the same time, pretty yeah. much. Um, so you're bringing in and you're saving jobs at one point at the same time as you're un unfortunately having to, to to let some very long standing mm -hmm. colleagues go. And it, it's it was just so hard, you know, so it's just explaining that all the time and, uh, and, and, and so that people understand why we make certain decisions. Yeah, of course. Um, now, we've all said and acknowledged that. Um, it's a very crucial uh, part of life that we um, we understand what's happening with people. But I think Lisa, as you, or one of you said earlier, it's not obviously always something that you can see. You know, it's not like oh, I broke my arm, it really hurts. Can I have a day off? You know. So, how do you think? How much better have we all got at recognizing the signs? And you've obviously trained some of your people to an extent as well. And how much better are we at giving people that space when they need it because it is an emotional or a mental well-being um, issue? I'll start with you, Lisa. Yeah, I think. I mean, I think you know the, the world was getting better at, at figuring all of this out before the pandemic, but it's just escalated it into a different level because it's like Wilma said. You know, you, you know that's just part of your. I think you said something. Um, earlier about how you were in operational HR and then you moved into you know the people side and you know and all of the um you know the the, the problems you know with with everybody's you know emotional well-being and things so um so I think we've got a lot better because everything's been thrown at us from every angle really um so you know personally as well as you know with, with our our staff so I think it's a great opportunity for us to um because if you think about the pandemic you know what companies we had before we went in and what we're coming out with um it's an opportunity for us to actually strengthen our whole company through everything that's happened um and i i feel that you know we're in better shape for the future um not just in terms of how we operate because we've had to change a lot of things to operate more efficiently but um but just in terms of that the cultural side of you know embedding that into everything that we do um and that you know our, our vision is to be one of the best places to work and I feel like we're on the way to to be doing that really mm, yeah very laudable to to set that as a as a goal um uh, Wilma would you say a similar in that um obviously you were already on the path to recognizing you already recognized that this was an issue before all this um but are we much better now at recognizing the signs and at giving our people the chance to to breathe to take that time off even though it's not a physical thing that we can see I mean obviously you wouldn't see it anyway if I phoned in sick and said you know I've broken my leg but <laughs> just acknowledging it that it's a genuine concern and giving them the time to go away with it and also um one of the other questions I wanted to ask you all really and Lisa has already sort of touched on it is you know this is a positive thing in a sense that we've all now got so many brilliant tools in place that we will continue um, to have as organisations? So yeah. it's quite a long question. Wilma, but... <laughs> <laughs> I, definitely, I definitely think it's changed and it's changed for the, the better. Um, and hopefully it's changed that will carry on after the pandemic. So this should be a foreverness, if you like. Um, I think flexibility is going to be the new buzzword. We need to offer flexibility. We need to learn the listening skill and listen to people. And follow-ups, another, you know, key area that we need to really check in with people. So, you know, they've shared with us what their concerns are. So we recommend solutions for them and then follow them up, you know, get back to them. How are you? Did you get that professional help? You know, is it helping you? Do you need other support? You know, is there anything else we can do for you? So I think flexibility, absolutely. And listening will be key. And hopefully, you know, the changes that we do make, they are positive changes, they're opportunities, and we continue. Yeah, same, uh, same question for you, Brad, in yeah. terms of how the company's perception has accelerated in, in a positive way. And for the long term, all these things yeah. can only now, you know, help and be in place for people. Yeah, I agree, completely agree with uh, both Lisa and Wilma there. I think, you know, COVID's given us a greater reason uh, to talk about it, hasn't it now? And, it, and it's, and it's, 
uh, you know, everyone's affected. It's not singling out any individuals. It's it, and it's very much accepted that actually, you know, the, the ratio is going to be far, far higher now. And, and most people either are affected or know someone who is or I would say everybody would be probably in that situation if they really thought about it. So it's almost united us all in this in this situation and it's and it's given us an opportunity to to normalize it, to talk about it, to 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 make sure that it is embedded in everything we do um, going forward. Yeah. Yeah, so absolutely. Agree. yeah, yeah, really, really positive. Now I'm going to wrap up uh, by asking you uh, what would be your three personal well-being or mental health tips today and three things I know we've talked about a lot already, but three things that every employer should be implementing from today if they haven't done so um, already. I'll start with you, Rad, your personal ones and your three tips of what a business should be doing. Right. So my personal ones are uh, be active, you know, so, so definitely. Tell me what the role while we're talking. I know, I know, <laughs> whatever, it may be, whatever it may be, whatever it may be. But even if it's, 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 you know, that accomplishment might just be a half an hour walk to one person and to somebody else, it'll be something much greater. So whatever that looks like, you know, uh, be active. Um, connect, you know, that's another really important part of well-being. So connect, whether that's with your community, whether it's you, with work, whether it's family, whatever. This whole sense of belonging is a really important part of well-being. Um, and it's something that I think, you know, society, we're probably losing more and more of compared to when you think of how difficult times people have gone through in the Second World War or whatever it may be, and people still pull together. But I think we've seen a lot more of that through the, through the, the pandemic. And I think that's really uh, been very important. So find your sense of belonging. And, and for me, you know, my family, my friends, my colleagues at work, you know, it's all very, very important part of my life and even more so uh, now. And then um, drink plenty of water. Yeah. I was terrible at drink, drinking. Well, I was terrible at it. And I'm, I, I'm better, I would say. Not brilliant, but getting there. Okay. Um, and in the interest of time, uh, Wilma, I'll move on to you now for your three personal well-being tips. Okay. Um, so I think leading by example and taking my own advice would be my first one. <laughs> yeah. So listening to the advice that I give to others. Um, communicate, 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 you know, create these platforms and get the two-way communication going um, and offer flexibility, you know, move from our rigid um, policies, processes, procedures, um, take note of what's happened in the world and be flexible. And just always remember that there are options. There are always options. It's never that bad that there is not a positive option that we can take. Yeah, brilliant. Um, and be kind to yourself and others. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you very much. And and Lisa, what would your be your three personal uh, well-being tips? So morning routine is really important for me. So um, so if that's um, I, I I generally walk. So how I start the day generally dictates the day. So if I can't have time for a walk, even just five minutes of of just having some calm time, whether it's listening to a podcast or an app or you know. A, music or whatever it's really important um, I've, I've been doing a journaling um, for the last 18 months um, and you start by writing three things that you're grateful for so gratitude um, is really important um, and I think especially when you you feel a bit oh you know just thinking about what you're grateful for is actually a really good way of moving your mind into a different place um, and um, yeah just you know what feeds your mind with good stuff. So you podcast, there's so much good stuff. So, you know, it's all on tap. And um, so that helps you focus your brain in a positive way as well. Um, and then from a, a company perspective, I think, you know, everything we've said about communication and um, but the two way communication being the most important thing, because we can communicate, communicate yoga, whatever, mm. but actually it doesn't matter. Um, it's actually listening and really checking in with, where we are um, and being agile and flexible enough, you know, to, to move and to adapt to what we need to really. So, brilliant. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Well, thank you so much for all your 
insight, your tips, advice, sharing the journey that you've all been on as individuals and, you know, with the company as well. And uh, for everybody else, there's plenty more content um, happening on the website this week. Mr. Motivator is coming up on Friday to give us a fitness workout. So um, do keep checking the, uh, our mental health hub. And uh, there'll be lots more content to um, keep you engaged. But of course, this is a, this is a year round, this is a constant um, thing now. So uh, as we've heard today, everybody is just making sure it's at the core of what they do for their for their people and themselves. So thank you again for joining us, and have a lovely day.